A very warm welcome to Rajesh Kothari, sir, at Fanakil Shah Classes. We are really excited to have you here for the guest talk. Um, Rajesh, sir, manages uh, a PMS of Alpha Accurate. It's basically one of the top performing PMS houses today and happens to manage more than 1,000 crores of clients AUM. Uh, we are here to learn from Rajesh, sir, through the course of today's session. We're really excited to have Rajesh, sir. Rajesh, sir, over to you. Maybe you would like to learn something from you first and then we'll begin with the Q&A session. Sure. Just give me one minute, please. Surely, sir. Is it proper? The settings and everything is fine from your end? And yes, sir. Uh, the, the screen is not visible, though. I, I don't know if you're trying to share something. Not yet. Not okay. Yet. Got it. Got it. Fair enough. Great. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, good morning, Shailesh. Uh, it's a really wonderful opportunity to interrupt with you, uh, you guys. You know, uh, the millennials is what the this uh, century belongs to. And, uh, you know, I can see uh, fresh uh, faces, you know, eager to probably learn some passion and uh, uh, some, you know, some little bit anxiety and some little bit excitement. That's what I see on the faces of uh, uh, students. Uh, I think there are probably more than 40 participants. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, that reminds me of my days uh, uh, of uh, th two avatars, uh, one as a student and uh, one as a faculty member at uh, MGM and many other faculties. Uh, you know, I was, uh, uh, you know, involved in, in my initial, uh, when I had a time, though that kind of a time I had, and I used to spend six hours in the, as a faculty in the few large campuses. Uh, so it, it, it reminds me of those uh, the energetic days and, you know, uh, but uh, uh, always a pleasure to interact with you. And, uh, uh, you know, we always believe that uh, uh, knowledge is one thing which one has to share as much as you can, because that's the only way you can learn. Uh, correct? The more you share and more you learn. Uh, so, uh, so, so thanks for that opportunity. And, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, let, me, uh, let me start this uh, with a, uh, you know, since um, all of you are probably uh, you know, inclined towards, uh, I think you already have taken decision that you want to be part of the equity market, uh, you know, whether buy side, whether sell side, uh, but uh, I think that's a decision you guys have already made. Uh, so which is a great decision because, uh, because this is a huge uh, wealth creation journey and uh, I'm sure uh, it will be uh, not only uh, fulfilling in terms of uh, satisfaction, but also a right way uh, to make uh, you know one reach you know and of course that's also an important thing am I right uh, so money is not any everything but money is also an important thing so um, uh, equity market uh, there are only uh, two rules as Warren Buffett says uh, rule number one never lose money and rule number two never forget rule number one uh, and these are the only two rules uh, there is no third rule believe me uh, you know you might have attended uh, many uh, lectures, uh, many participants, you might be doing a lot of training, but ultimately only these two rules uh, count for you. First, never lose money. And second, make sure you don't forget rule number one. If you make this as a Bible, the rest everything will fall in place. Believe me. Um, every day morning when you wake up, you should only think about this. By doing this strategy, by doing this research, am I going to lose money? Simple. If you are going to lose money, rule number two comes into play. Never forget rule number one. So don't implement that strategy. Are you a trader? Are you an investor? Are you an advisor? Are you a wealth manager? Are you, are you in debt? I request everybody to please mute themselves. Uh, are you in equity? Are you in debt? Doesn't make any difference. Um, I was reading one book, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Hussle. And uh, you know what he says that Whosoever has bought anything, whether you are a chartist or fundamentalist, whether you are a one-day trader or buy today, sell tomorrow, or you are a 10-year investor or 100 years investor, you should first write down why you want to take a decision. Okay? Feel free, if you have a, any confusion when I'm saying anything, please feel free, you can raise your hand. Yeah? Uh, I want it to be very, very interactive. Um, so, if you are a buyer, so let, you know, let's assume uh, you know, one of the participants, say for example, Siddharth, uh, suppose he believes in short-term speculation, 
कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है इज नॉट दैट इज रॉन्ग स्ट्रेटेजी कैन बी राइट स्ट्रेटेजी बट राइट प्लीज राइट इट डाउन वाई यू वॉन्ट टू बाई फॉर एग्जाम्पल रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज हाइपोथेटिकली करेक्ट यू मै आई टेव ए शॉर्ट टर्म व्यू राइट इट डाउन वाई यू वॉन्ट टू बाय वन ऑफ यूर पार्टिसिपेंट माइट बी से फॉर एग्जाम्पल थ्रू वर्ल्ड माइट बी ही लाइक्स टेक्निकल्स नो प्रॉब्लम प्लीज राइट इट डाउन वाई यू वॉन्ट टू बाय यू आर बाइंग बिकॉज इट इज क्रॉस टेन डी एम ए ट्वेंटी डी एम ए थर्टी डी एम ए टू हंड्रेड डी एम ए रिवर्स कैंडल दिस कैंडल दैट कैंडल वट एवर द रीजन एंड रिशाल माइट बी फंडामेंटल राइटिंग आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट वर्क टेन ईयर्स नो प्रॉब्लम राइट डाउन वाई यू वॉन्ट टू बाय रिलायंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज यू थिंक रिलायंस विल ग्रो से फॉर एग्जाम्पल थर्टी परसेंट कंपाउंडेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ अर्निंग्स ओवर नेक्स्ट टेन ईयर्स और ए टेक्निक एनालिस माइट फील दैट Fifty DMA support हो गया है, and therefore I think from here it is going to be a big journey. Or a day in day out trader might feel, you know, some technical chart is saying or whatever his his news or his murmur in the market. His intelligence says that Reliance is going to probably go up by thirty rupees in a day. No problem. Please write down. And moment that thesis doesn't work out, remember the rule number two. Never forget rule number one. so is the if your fundamental this is not working out if your technical this is not working out if your 200 dma support is not working out whatever the reason you might have thought so as morgan has says every my decision is a right decision every decision in your life every decision in your equity market whether you are a trader or fundamentalist everything is right decision important is you should write down the assumptions while you are taking that action but what if the action of assumptions do not play out the way in which you want it to be and that's where the fundamental starts that's where the wealth creation journey get disrupted 99% of people they don't make money because when the assumptions are not working as per their own expectations they don't change the action that's the biggest problem you want to be a career in equity market you write down why you want to make it a career in equity market are you ready for 22 hours passion if not this is not your cup of tea period as a firm for example we don't hire anybody who believes in 9 to 5 this is not meant for 9 to 5 This is not bank for nine to five. You want nine to five? Be into the bank. Probably even bank is now not nine to five. You know, one of my relatives is in ICICI bank. He is slogging out for for twelve hours. Even a custodian in fund account has to slog it for twelve hours. Nobody, nobody right now is nine to five. The only difference between equity and others is here you enjoy what you do. In other assignments, probably it becomes monotonous beyond a point. Correct, particularly in the finance field, I'm talking about. so this is a 24 by 7 passion is not your job if you are joining as a job and everything you will make money 10 lakh 12 lakh 15 lakh 18 lakh joining pe mil jayega do saal mein increment mil jayega 30 taka bad jayega bazaar acha hai bonus mil jayega 100% bonus mil jayega ek saal ke baad 3 saal ke baad 5 saal ke baad shaadi ho jayegi ek gaadi aa jayegi ek lona wala mein flat aa jayega and if you are happy this is not your cup of tea believe me nothing of this will happen All this will be wishful thinking will remain on paper. Are you ready to put ten x? You know there is a beautiful book. I think uh, the ten x rule. I don't know how many guys have might might have read that book. It's a very good book. The ten x. You want to make ten x money? Are you ready for ten x efforts? You know when I interview people, they say, "Kya expectation hai, sir? Eight lakh? Kyun chahiye, bhai? Eight lakh? Nahi, sir, bas eight lakh. To abhi kya basic hai, Bombay hai, life hai." Are you ready to put efforts of one lakh? Are you ready to put efforts of eighty lakhs? You will get eight lakhs. Cake walk, no worries. You can draw eighty lakhs, no worries. Are you ready to make effort of eight crores? You will get eighty lakhs. You want to make hundred crores? Who wants to make hundred crores in this room? Hundred crores in a year. Who is going to make it? Siddharth was the first one. Are you ready to put thousand crore efforts? Who wants to put thousand crores efforts? Raise your hands. Two guys I can see. Others don't want to make thousand crores. Boss, ten x. Think ten x. Ten x efforts. Ten x knowledge. Ten x skills. Ten x passion. 
10 10x fundamentals, 10x Excel, everything has to be 10x. You'll become 10x. It's a journey. Nobody on the earth can stop you. You can write 8 crore check on day one. Not a problem. You know? So I'm a little bit digressing from the topic that investment philosophy is up, go, be a bot, go, be a is up. Bot, sun, liya. Karna, kya hai? Wo karne ke liye, kya karne ke liye, aap te yaar ho. Mujhe ye bata hi. Warren Buffet padh liya, annual report padh liya, Morgan Hazel padh liya, sab padh liya. Sailesh ji ne jitna bata hai da, sab ko ready kar diya. Barabar hai ki nahi? Am I right or not? Who has not read Warren Buffet one annual letter? I'm sure everybody would have. Who would have not read 10 annual reports? I'm sure everybody would have. You can raise your hands down. No problem. Because second question is coming and it's going to be a very interesting question. Who reads one annual report a day? Any hand. I repeat, who reads? Reads. I'm not saying analyzing. I'm not saying Excel. I rephrase again my question. Who reads one annual report one day? No one. Correct? Think of it. If you would have read one annual report one day in two years, you would have read 700 annual reports. I'm talking about just reading. I'm not talking about analyzing. There are seven pages of management discussion and analysis in any annual report, seven to 10. That's it. 7,000 pages padna hai. Din mein 10 pages padna hai. I believe today's generation believe no donkey work, smart work. You want to make reach quick? Possible. Thus page padna hai. One day, one annual report. In one year, you would have 365 companies, mindsets in your mind. Across the industries, across the sectors, across the promoters. In two years, you would have 365 into two, 700 annual reports in your mind. You would have read ACC annual report, you know what ACC is doing to improve your cement profitability and then you next day, uh, day read Gujarat Ambuja and then next day you read Ultratech and next, next day you talk about JK Cement. All are different, all are different regional, all are into different markets. Some might be small companies, some might be large companies, some might be mega company and the next day you read the Mexico Holcim report, global report and think what they are doing to become 100x, why they are Holcim and why Ambuja cannot become Holcim. Try to correlate, try to interlink. And next day you read Asian Paint and they say that I am also going into something, something. And next day you read, uh, you know, Grassim and they say I am doing into something, something. Interlinkages in your mind will start. Even if you don't want the interlinkages in your mind will start. Bet me, if you have a 700 companies at the end of second year, how many guys can compete with you? Maybe none. आप अगर इंटरव्यू में जाओगे बोलोगे सर मेरे को 350 एन्युअल रिपोर्ट का कंपनीज का बिजनेस मॉडल में पढ़ के आया हूं मैं एक्सपर्ट नहीं हूं एक्सपर्ट बनना चाहता हूं लेकिन मैं पढ़ के आया हूं आप सवाल कीजिए मैं जवाब देने की कोशिश करूंगा वो कैन से नो कौन ना बोलेगा मुझे बताइए हमें जरूरत है वी आर लुकिंग फॉर राइट कैंडिडेट्स बट एफर्ट्स सॉरी टू से इज मिसिंग एट टाइम्स Forget one annual report a day. Tell me one thing. One annual report a week. Kitne log patte? Nahi patte. Ye fact hai. Kitne ko 8 lakh rupiah chahe beginning mein. Mene sales ji ko sawal puchha tha. Sir, mein aapke students ko lena chata hoon. Kitna expectation? Unho bola, sir, minimum 7 lakhs. Mene bola, sir, minimum 70 annual reports. 10 minute maaga. Kya galat kiya? क्यों नहीं पढ़ा? Why? What is missing? Hunger? Passion? Interest? If these three things are missing, don't be into equity market. Believe me, this is not your cup of tea. नहीं कर पाएंगे. नहीं कर पाएंगे. बहुत ही competitive field है. Ninety percent of fund managers have underperformed the benchmark indices globally. Over the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 95% global fund managers have underperformed the benchmark indices despite their passion, knowledge, 
whatever you can think, they have everything. They are the best intellectual people on the earth. Believe me. And yet, they have underperformed. You know, you know, what I'm trying to say, please think what I'm trying to say. I'm saying 95% of fund managers with a 30 years of global equity market experience, domain, skills, consultants, strategies, teams have underperformed the benchmark indices. What does it mean? That's the competition. That's the competition. And if you are not passionate enough, you will not underperform. You will underperform by a mass scale. Market up 20%, you will be up 5%. What will you do? Nahi kar paayenge. Din ka ek annual report padna compulsory from today. One annual report, one day. 10 minutes. You should treat it as a novel. You should treat it as your music. You treat it as your hobby. Agar wo hobby nahi hai, to market aapke liye nahi hai. This market is only for the people who enjoy. This market is not for the people who want to make money out of it as a job or as a career. This is not a job. This is not a career. This is your hobby. And if this is your hobby, then only you can survive in this market. Otherwise, you cannot survive in this market. I have seen guys who have got blood pressure at the age of 29. I have seen guys who have got the gray hair at the age of 32. I have seen diabetics at the age of 33. I've seen people like that because this is not their hobby. Better not to spend time if it's going to impact your health because if it is not your hobby, it will impact your health, period. Simple, hai na, sir? If you don't hobby, then you gray hair. Now, you can see how good it looks. It's all hair, it's black hair, you know. Salman Khan is a style. But if it is not your hobby, then it won't work. One annual report a day. Think of it kind of a competition. Sir, competition field mein, agar aapko aage hai, to aapko kya karna hai? Kya ek Zoom lecture attend karne se aap competitive ban jaoge? Nahi ban paoge. Sales bhai aapko paachas bar bolega, kuch nahi kar paayenge. That will not make you competitive. To become a competitive, you need to have a power of knowledge. First thing, and that power of knowledge comes by reading the business models. You will become a consultant. If you read 300 companies and your reports, you'll become a consultant. You will become a strategist. You will become, you will be knowing everything from Tesla of the world to Tata Motor of the world. If you are in your social circle, okay, with your 10 guys in your group and somebody is giving some, some comment, Next moment, you will be able to say, no, sir. Asian Pen has not done that. Why you are doing that? I read Asian Pen last 10 years in your report. They were 200 crore company and today they are 9,000 crore company. How many of you know Asian Pen? Okay, tell me one thing. Whether Asian Pen enjoys pricing power? Yes or no? Raise your hand if you are saying yes. Anybody who says yes, raise your hand. Anybody who says no? Raise your left hand. Anybody who says yes, raise your right hand. Asian paint. Do you know Asian paint companies? Note your heads if you if you all know Asian paint. If not, then paint your home ones. Okay. Okay, you know Asian paint. Great. Thanks. How many of you guys believe that Asian paint is a pricing power? Raise your right hand. How many guys believe Asian paint doesn't have pricing power? Raise your left hand. Don't do please. I'm confused. Asian Pen is confused. Okay. Asian Pen is not Asian Paint is a company in the last 20 years, whenever the crude oil price went up, they didn't increase the price. Is it a shocker? Correct? Isn't it a shocker? Everybody thought Asian Paint is a market leader always taking the price leadership. Here is a company which says, if the crude oil goes up, I will not do price increase. Why? They want to get kill the competition. For two quarters, they will not take price increase. Competition will go down because competition cannot afford. Probably they will go out of market. They will lose the domain. And then 
after two quarters, this guy's increased the price. Asian paint margins in last 20 years has never become 40%. They make sure they don't go up margins. They don't want a new entrant and yet Ultratech came and they said, we want to enter the paint. They understood this game. Think of it. If you had a red Asian paint and if your Mosa and Chacha is into paint business and you give this insight to your Mosa, because I can see many young faces, I don't see many married faces. If you use it for father-in-law, he'll definitely get super impressed. <laughs> Think of it. What will happen? Thus, log khade hai aur apne ek insights ka arrow maar diya. Everybody will listen to you. Ye to kuch banda alag baat kar raha hai, bhai. Ye to humne socha hi nahi tha, bhai. Polycap ka annual report padke gaye. Koi baat kar raha tha wire and cable ki. Apne bola, do you know Polycap has thousand distributor and now plan into it another thousand distributor. Uncle, aap to already wire and cable mein ho. Nagpur mein bethe ho sir, aap Polycap ki dealership kyun nahi lete ho? Are, he is giving grant to me. Ye to mujhe bhi nahi maanun tha. Mein to abhi tak Surya Roshni ka kar raha tha dealer. He is telling me Polycap is expanding with a high return on net worth and with a better return on capital employed for the distributor, with a just in time inventory for the distributor. Distributor to bata hai, sir, aap ye galat kaam kar rahe ho. आप आपका इन्वेंटरी का टर्नओवर तो सर आप तीन टाइम कर रहे हो लेकिन अगर मैं आपको ऐसी कंपनी की एजेंसी दिला दूं जो एवरीडे आपका इन्वेंटरी रिफिल कर देगी तो आपका तो सर कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड रहेगा ही नहीं तो सर आप डेट क्यों ले रहे हो अंकल आपको लोन नहीं लेना चाहिए आपको एक बार रिविलेट करना चाहिए बोलेगा अरे यार ये मेरे को गुनाह बांट रहा है ऑल ऑफ सडन यू बिकम इंपॉर्टेंट दे में एग्री दे में डिसएग्री सेकंड पॉइंट बट सोशल सर्कल में यू विल बी सेइंग आई नो समथिंग Correct? I know something. It is, it is not a matter of we want to prove that we are something, but it's a matter of in your social networking also, it adds to tremendous value. People will start valuing your opinion. People will start listening to you. Make sure wherever you go, people listen to you. How? If you have a knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, you will not be able to add value. Dean Kayak in your report, Compulsory. Moment you do that, for every company, you will have one customer, one competitor, and one supplier. Am I right or not? For every company, you would have five customers, five suppliers, and five competitors. If you read 360 companies, you have covered all companies, all customers, all competitors, all suppliers. Cement company says that my power cost is going to go down. And NTPC annual report says that my power realization is going to go up. Disconnect. Question mark for research analyst. Why there is a disconnect? Do more internal research. Maybe that cement company is giving you the wrong knowledge. Possible. Check with the other cement company what they are saying. They are saying, hey, my power cost is going to go down. Because I'm not going to buy from India. I'm going to import. Oh, okay. So NTPC says power cost is going to go up. These both are like saying the same thing. But he is going to take import and therefore his power cost is going to be lesser. Read the Indonesia company, coal company. The Indonesian company says we are going to compete in Indian market by increasing our dispatches to Indian market. Yes. This is matching with the cement company who is saying, I will import the pet cock and reduce my power cost. Supplier, customer, competitor, 360 degree due diligence is a first prerequisite if you are doing any research on any company. 360 degree due diligence is must. Lekin wo 360 due diligence every day kaisa karenge? Nahi kar paayenge. Lekin agar aapne saadhe din so company ka annual report pad liya, to your brain starts working. Kahin pe to kuch pada tha. And you are making notes of every annual report. There is 10 bullet points or markers. That's it. Simple. So it's very easy to refer. Reference notes laga diya, pad liya. Cross-checking hogi. 
कंपनी को मिलते हो तो क्या आप बाहर की कंपनी को भी मिलते हो नहीं मिल पाते तो लेकिन मिलना जरूरी है क्या विदाउट मीटिंग कंपनी यू कैन बिकम बिलियन है You have to just open the annual report, cross-check what they are saying. You have presentations of the global companies which are all are listed. You have transcripts of global companies which are all are listed. How much time it takes? Ten minutes? Just to control F, search for the imports, search for India. That's it. You want to see how ABB Global is focusing on India? You don't need a rocket science. My analyst on other day spent three days. I said bullshit. He's a new analyst. I said, "Come to my cabin." He came to me, and I said, "What you have done?" He said, "I have done this." I said, "Good, but this is not the right way." He said, "What I should do?" I said, "Do the segment wise. Click the global annual report. Do control F. Do India. Do percent revenue. See the capex. Only three control F. That's it." He did it. Mapped it in ten minutes. Decision taken. Market is not going to wait for your research. Stock is up thirty percent in three days. you will keep doing research for 10 years research is never ending process market doesn't wait this is a fund management you have to be sharp you should know what you need to focus on if you don't know what you need to focus on you are not here to become a phd on abb nobody is going to give the nobel peace prize ki boss abb pe sabse acha aapka knowledge hai i don't want that abb mein paisa kamaya ke liye wo mujhe baat karo focus on only relevant things don't focus on unnecessary things that's second important thing time management or when you do research 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 do your time management wisely connect the dots connect the links you have a global companies business model available to you you know i remember my 2003 days and i remember there was a bharti airtel stock and the stock was trading at 32 rupees and the few global fund managers while we were doing research on bharti airtel the few global fund managers they picked up huge quantity of bharti airtel almost like if i'm not wrong that time 5% stake in the company and we started thinking that what must have made him to buy bharti airtel 5% the telecom revolution was still just started in india i'm talking about 2003 where the mobile was still a luxury and we quickly realized that he knows what exactly bharti airtel will do over next 10 years because those fund managers have made billions in china and in us in 1960 to 2002 in that 40 years there are many countries have already seen the telecom revolution india was late for them the experience was handy and we were trying to reinvent the wheel bharti airtel kya karega kisi ko nahi malum hai kya karega what they assume they just assume china will get replicated in india simple you might say assumption growth instead of 40% 30% 20% 50% was sab hota rahega but in nutshell the 1 million subscriber will become 100 million subscribers and then 500 million subscribers is a question of time 30 can become 140 or it can become 300 that's question of time but surely it is going to happen because they had a ready experience and moment we realize that they had a ready experience the first thing what we did is to speak with those fund managers unka dimag mein kya hai unke paas ready kana hai yahan pe to kisi ko india mein malum nahi hai company ko bhi nahi malum hai kya hone wala hai kyunki wo to beginning hai nobody knew and we bought stake in bharti airtel so at times what is important is that learn keep observing keep learning and that's third very important thing mapping the skills who knows what you should know because if you know who knows what life becomes easy you don't need to reinvent the wheel pentan was 32 rupees stock the 32 rupees stock became 12 rupees stock and i had a stake in pentan 32 became 12 rupees stock and i still remember on those days 
the founders also probably kind of a lost the home. You know, and we said, let's give one more chance. You have already done so much. And then, of course, the rest is literally became 800 rupee stock. But the important is you should know to map the skills. You should know the patterns get repeated globally. Which pattern will be applicable when? That's the art and science. If you know that, then it becomes easy for you to correlate. But if you don't know only, for you everything is new. But actually everything is not new. Everything is already old. So research analyst comes to me and they say, I don't know, this is a new field to me. I said, bullshit, there's nothing called new. Aapke liye niya hai, bajar ke liye purana hai. Don't act like I'm a day one into this sector. Pado, pado ke to logo ne kaam kiya hua hai. Wo gini implement karo. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Try to become smart. If your excels are rightly templated with a detailed eye, very important, with eye on details, it becomes very easy to figure out where will you go wrong. It is not important where you are going right. Remember rule number one, never lose money. You lose money because you go wrong. कहाँ पे सही गए important नहीं है कहाँ पे गलत नहीं जाना है वो important है so that's the third thing the detail I I for detail that's something very very critical I'm sure everybody would have told you same thing but how to develop the art of detail have you focused on that everybody would have told you मुझे detail I चाहिए अरे obvious है जरा detail I चाहिए किसको नहीं चाहिए कैसे बिल्ड करो कोई वो मुझे बताइए। What is the shortcut? What is the smart way to build an eye of detail? That's important. The shortcut, the smarter way to build the eye of detail is map the skills. Who is globally number one cement analyst? Who has got the award? If you are tracking a cement, follow him. Follow him on LinkedIn, follow him on Twitter, follow him everywhere. Look at his blogs, look at his everything. Because he is the number one cement analyst in the world. He will be always 10 times ahead of time. Correct? Am I right or not? But important is, forget next 10 years, read his past 20 years blogs. Because India mein jo hona hai, China mein, Japan mein ho chuka hai. First nahi hai. Hame lag raha hai first naya wave hai. What is the new wave? कुछ नई नई चीज नहीं है हो चुकी है वर्ल्ड में हम 2000 डॉलर पर कैपिटा आज आ गए यूएस में 2000 डॉलर पर कैपिटा 40 इयर्स पहले थे दे नो व्हाट दे आर गोइंग टू स्पेंड ऑन एवरीथिंग विल कम इनटू डिस्क्रिशनरी नाउ डिस्क्रिशनरी डेफिनेशन माइट बी डिफरेंट डिपेंडिंग ऑन 2020 और 2002 और 1980 फॉर 1980 द डिस्क्रिशनरी वाज फिक्स्ड लाइन इन 2022 डिस्क्रिशनरी इज एवरीबॉडी वुड हैव डेटा एट देयर होम एवरीबॉडी वुड हैव टू राउटर्स नाउ माइट बी थ्री राउटर्स might be four in future. That's the only difference. That time also people spend more on health. Now also people will spend more on health. That time also people spend more on hobbies. Now also people will spend more on hobbies. Hobbies might change. Nature will never change. Nature will never change. Everybody who likes to go to restaurant. Everybody who likes to go to Mahabaleshwar. Everybody wants to aim for a business class. Natural tendency. Patterns are same. Same thing gets replicated. Same thing gets replicated. There is nothing called this time is different. There's a beautiful book written by this time is different by uh, uh, the Kenneth Kaufman. Please read that book. This time is different. He goes 300 years back. 500 years back. BC and AD and all that stuff. And he has given 1640 mein kya hua tha, wohi chit repeat ho gai. So anybody who says this time is different, bullshit. This time is never different. Everything remains the same. Your grand to 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 grandfather got married. Correct or not? 
and then somebody else got married then somebody else got married then somebody else got married then somebody else tabhi do di pehnte the uske pehle aur kuch pehnte the aur pant shirt pehnte patterns same kuch change nahi hota hai patterns get same but you should know how to correlate the patterns if you want to become smart research analyst correlate the patterns because that makes your life very very easy check who is number one cement analyst check who is number one cement analyst check who is number one power analyst check number one power fund globally because there are many thematic funds follow them not only follow them read their past newsletters read 1970 newsletter that's more relevant today how many of you are having maybe some concern that what if the inflation is shooting up globally so what will happen global recession how many of you are worried good mind mein chalta rahega na how many of you are worried 1970 i don't know if you guys know in 1970 inflation was also very high in us market how many of you are worried that 1970 inflation and today's inflation both are very very parallels between both how many of you believe that please raise your hands okay perfect please down your hands how many of you have done just one google search resemblance of 1970 and today only one i saw 20 hands raising up that i was worried can 1970 repeat today it is a good thing it means at least you are thinking at least you know good good thing for a beginner great congratulations but google baba readily available to you free of cost take your hunger to the next level take your desire to learn to the next level don't stop there स्टॉप नहीं होना है आपके माइंड में सवाल आया कि 1970 ये कुछ पढ़ रहे हैं हम कुछ तो हो रहा है जस्ट टू गूगल डिफरेंस बिटवीन 1970 एंड टुडे सो इफ यू कम फॉर एन इंटरव्यू विल आस्क यू आर यू वरीड यू विल से यस माय सेकंड क्वेश्चन व्हाई व्हाट इज द रिसेम्बलेंस सर वो तो नहीं मालूम है क्यों नहीं मालूम है गूगल बाबा तो है नाइनटीन सेवेंटी में भी पैदा नहीं हुआ था आप भी पैदा नहीं हुए थे लेकिन गूगल बाबा तो पैदा हुए हैं He is giving you everything free. So if you give me four answers that 1970 and 2022 there is a big difference because in 1970 crude oil from four dollar to thirty dollar it is sixteen times increase from two dollar to thirty dollar whereas I believe from now crude will not become sixteen times. I will say wow. पढ़ क्या है? खुद का knowledge नहीं है लेकिन पढ़ क्या है? अंदर है. सिखा सकते हैं. प्रॉब्लम नहीं है सीखने के लिए ही इज रेडी ही इज विलिंग टू टेक दैट एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट ही इज हंग्री टू टेक द एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट एंड इफ यू गिव मी फाइव रीजन वाई नाइनटीन सेवेंटी इन टूडे इज डिफरेंट आई विज ए वाव दिस फिफ्टीन आउट ऑफ टेन इज नॉट टेन आउट ऑफ टेन ही इज नॉट ओनली रेडी बट ही रिमेंबर्स इट एज वेल सो इट मीन्स ही मस्ट नोटेड डाउन समवेयर इन इज लाइफ इट मीन्स ही इज अ मोर डिटेल आई I'm not going to ask you what's your view on ACC. You don't know. I can't ask you. What do you want me to ask you? Do you know DCF? I don't care. Excel template है. कोई भी कर सकता है. तीन सवाल पूछूंगा DCF के अंदर you will not able to answer. But DCF तो कोई भी कर सकता है. You know my kid is not DCF. As a research analyst. your eye on detail and the detail i you can develop fast without waste of time by becoming more intelligent about what you are reading by identifying the patterns what has happened already in the world and by taking blessings of google baba never wait for second question if your first question get answer ask second question why Why crude became two to thirty in 1970, and why crude cannot become from eighty to five hundred dollar in 
the answer would be two became 30 because invasion of US and Iraq and all that stuff. Whereas this time, probably it is not going to happen. Keep asking why. Keep asking why. If the US demographic pattern that time was a baby boomers, they were spending more, whereas this time it is not going to be like that because there is a completely different demography. Answer is why. So demographic. Can this happen in India? Now, all of a sudden, a different question. Baby boomer in India? Can India replicate what US has done? How many of you know, want to know what will work in 10 years? Konsa stock lene ka? Kisko chahiye? Abhi abhi chalo, abhi abhi bata Konsa stock chahiye? Das saal mein. Kisko, kisko jhanna hai? Raise your hands. Who wants to know in 10 years which stocks will go up? Everyone? Everyone, am I right? If you want to know which stocks will go up, have you studied which stocks went up? When the per capita from 2000 became 3000 in US and China and Japan? Very easy. You can raise your down. Please down your hands. Please down your hands. Thank you. Very easy. You can make billions. Kuch nahi karna hai. 2000 to 3000 US per capita type karna hai. Usme US indices, you will get a 20 indices in US stock exchange. Every sector, you have one indices. Look at which indices went up the most during that period. Then run China for same, same per capita. Then run Japan, same per capita. Do sector-wise indices, which are readily available on Google. Stock performance, indices performance available readily on Google. You know where to invest your money. Sectors, may not be companies. Fine. At least you have reached to that point. Correct? At least you have reached to that point. Makes life easy. Other four economies have done similar. Now you will start mapping the commonalities. Then you will start asking a question. Why this commonality? And why there is an uncommonality? And then what is relevant for India? What is not relevant for India? And try to further do mapping. That's called smart work. But if you start reading US demographics, oh my God. And you will start reading McKinsey report. Oh shit. And after 10 days, you will come to me. Sir, uh, I don't concrete answer to me. They are getting paid for not writing concrete. Am I right? They write 500 pages book. They charge you bomb. Correct? Conclusion will be somewhere in between. They will not write you for one line. One line guy cannot charge more than one lakh rupees. But if you write 500 pages, ka thappa daloge, you can charge you know, 5 crore as a consultant to the corporate. You will not get an answer. Simple. So try have a detailed eye in a smart developing. Work in a way which can make your life faster and far more efficient. And with that report, if you go to your senior member, definitely he will like your work. Kisko Smart, fast work, efficient work. Who doesn't want? Everybody loves it. You want 80 lakhs rupees in your first year? You can deserve. You can write your own check. You don't need to ask for 8 lakhs. Selesh, you don't need to ask for 8 lakhs. You can ask for 80 lakhs. You can ask for 80 lakhs. Provided you work smart. That is very important. Now think of it. You are making 10x effort. Reconnecting my first point. You are doing 10x efforts. You are basically making sure you are reading 10x annual reports. You are making sure you are making 10x smarter work. You are making sure you have analyzed 10x more patterns. Definitely you will learn 10x more than anybody else on this earth at the same age. That goes without saying. It's an outcome. Input sahi, output sahi. Simple hai. Asi lakh kama sakte hai. Bajwala ant lakh kama hai gama. Asi lakh kama sakte hai. Ka problem hai. Koi problem nahi hai. You can be a TEDx speaker. You can be a TEDx. Why not? Ho sakte hai. Kya badi baat hai? Jo isko 700 annual report ka business model maanum hai which includes Indian company, Chinese company, Indonesian company, Unilever, Global, US, Tesla, Automation, Report Design, McKinsey Study, sab baalum hai. You will become a chalta phirta encyclopedia for corporate world. Who can stop you? Only your own passion and your hunger can be speed breaker. Nothing else. Nothing else. 
कजिन का शादी है भाव का बच्चे का शादी है इसका शादी कुछ नहीं ट्वेंटी फोर बाई सेवन फोकसिंग ओनली वन थिंग ऑन योर पैशन एंड ओनली इफ यू एंजॉय देन ओनली दिस फील्ड इज फॉर यू दिस फील्ड इज ए ट्रिमेंडस पोटेंशियल we are so fortunate that we are in this field on an average we meet one company a day and we have a liberty to ask question even to shri mukesh bhai amani because we are shareholders no other field can give you that exposure and that liberty and that freedom we can ask question to anybody as a shareholder we can do whatever you want we can ask question we can visit the plant we can visit the office we can meet the senior management we can do brainstorming and we can ask question and we can also say you are wrong to the promoters which other field can gives you the liberty none and the good part is that you are getting paid for that oh wow super no other field can give you this sky is the limit sky is the limit and that's basically the way you should focus from here on you guys are already intelligent you guys are smart you guys are tech savvy forget about you know whether somebody is from a wharton or somebody is from iim or somebody is from somaya or somebody is from uh, some pet school doesn't make any difference yahan pe hona chahiye agar wo hai aur agar passion hai nobody can stop you with that i open up for q and a Uh, i thought not to take you through uh, my investment philosophy how to buy i think you guys know about all that stuff if not you can always go to my youtube video everything is there but this conversation i cannot put in on my website correct whereas everything else which are there lot of insights lot of details lot of things we have already put up uh, every quarter we have our youtube videos it gives detail knowledge and insights to what we do and how we do but i thought uh, let me take this opportunity to actually uh, fill you with something where i see the gaps today in many candidates and where at the same time i see the tremendous potential uh, for uh, today's youngsters to make the billions quickly compared to what i and sales probably would have built i i i don't think this guest talk would have come at a, a better time than this so the most of the candidates in the class are, have just finished their first trimester of our program they are about to begin their journey today on how to go about reading the annual report so i i guess you have literally ignited the fire at the start of the second trimester which begins with how to go about reading the annual report so i you know no better start to the second trimester on this part you don't need to be taught how to read the annual reports friends is just like a story book if you are to be taught how to read annual report friends i'm talking not analyzing excel part is different of course that your academy will do but as far as mda the management discussion and analysis goes it is a just like a economic times times of india midday whatever glamour magazine if you are reading is a story book right right definitely sir and so from the rest 20% as well as from the faculty side what we have done is we have prepared a list of uh, questions from your uh, videos as well as uh, the articles which you have written so if you would bear with us we'd like to see as much and seek as much answers on those front from your side i'll be moderating on behalf of those candidates through the course of the next whatever time we can grab on your calendar on this so with your permission shall we get started yeah, on the q&a please please right. so, so um you know we, we talked about the recent market corrections in our discussion right now so um now obviously at times markets overreact to you know emotions as well as uh things which may not seem rational but at the same time there are certain aspects where you see that the correction to last long now in terms of Uh, capacity of a fund manager uh, how do you go about taking a decision in terms of rotating the capital across your portfolio allocations for example if you are already all in into the portfolio you don't really have any incremental cash coming in how do you decide whether to rotate that money across businesses or you just you know go through the correction irrespective of the fact whatever allocations you have done you stick around with those allocations how do you take that call see what happens is that equity markets are very very dynamic market correct and um, uh, you know uh, we always believe that uh, markets are never rational correct uh, the efficient market hypothesis 
uh, generally doesn't work because if the markets are efficient, then price will not go up or down, uh, correct? Um, uh, and the volatility creates an opportunity. So for us, the decision is every day, it's every moment, uh, you know, uh, every, every new stock price leads to new valuations, correct? And that offers you a plethora of opportunities in terms of the relative valuations, uh, correct? So a stock might be great company um, available at a, a, you know, say X valuation, but if the stock B, which till now was available at premium to A, and now gets discount to A due to the just market correction, assuming everything else remains a constant, then of course you need to switch from A to B, correct? Uh, so uh, it is a quite a pretty, pretty dynamic market. Uh, the only uh, constant is change. Um, and uh, we strongly believe that agility is one thing, which, which that's the only way to make money, correct? Uh, you need to be agile. Uh, in my view, in long term, we all are dead, correct? Well, what is important is how you like, uh, till the time you leave, and that's important. Uh, in long term, we all are dead. Uh, today's, uh, uh, you know, yesterday's blue chips are today's red chips, and today's blue chips can become potentially red chips tomorrow. There is not a single company in Dow Jones today, uh, when, uh, which was the company when it was formed in Dow Jones. Uh, in 1980, the finance was only uh, probably, uh, what, 8% of the Dow Jones, and probably today it is 30% of Dow Jones. In 1980, technology was 0% of Dow Jones, and today it is 35% of down just something like that. Uh, don't go by my exit number. I don't remember the exit numbers. But uh, the moral of the story is that the only constant is change. 75% of census has changed in last 16 years. That's three fourth, and all were blue chips. And many of that companies are down 90% 9-0 from their uh, historic high, despite they were blue chips on one fine day. So today's blue chips can become tomorrow's red chip. So only constant is change, embrace the volatility, take advantage of volatility and take the decision, uh, you know, when it comes to the fund management, it becomes a little bit more, uh, the portfolio construction, the relative weightages, uh, the defense use, the cyclicals, the growth, and many more such. It is, it is not a, a one-line answer. Uh, you know, there are a lot of factors which goes into it. Um, and prudently, uh, judiciously, uh, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, your capital allocation, uh, the portfolio weightages, the sector weightages are rightly uh, placed uh, based on the mandate of the fund manager. So every fund manager, every product has a different mandate. If it is a long shot product, you would have the long shot mandate. Uh, if you would have a private equity, he would have a completely nine years mandate. If it is a public equity, he has a three, three to four to five years mandate. So every mandate is different. Every product is different. And based on the risk reward expectations from that particular product, you need to fulfill uh, you know, your role based on that. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, obviously, in hindsight, it does look like a long-term transition. But while you are going through that transition, like, how do you take that call in terms of whether this business seems more attractive as compared to this? Because as you said, the prices are changing, example, the valuations keep on changing. For example, Which particular example, constant do you focus on in this dynamics of change? So say, for example, uh, let me give you a live example. Uh, say, for example, in March 2019, COVID entered India, correct? Uh, we believed in product capital create wealth, very important for us. Uh, and we said, samaj mein nahi hai, kya hone wala hai? After a very generally that kind of view, normally we don't take. For the first time, we said we are not able to understand what is happening and what will happen in future. We moved about 15% of the portfolio from cyclicals to defense use. In defense, you were added huge weightage to pharma. We said probably pharma is the one thing, may not get impacted. We never knew what will happen, but we said it will be less impacted because it's a pandemic. Simple, very simple common sense. We thought pharma stocks will go up. 50-60% in next three to four years. That's why we bought pharma. In a matter of four months, pharma went up 65%. And by that time, unlockdown started, Diwali 2020, unlockdown started, cyclicals went down 25%, pharma went up 65%. We sold pharma and back to cyclicals. Correct? So whenever you think the earnings growth, which is the most important long-term drivers of stock market returns, if that is getting changed, higher or lower, you need to make sure you make a right portfolio action 
to ensure that your portfolio is positioned for growth. So if I'm owning a portfolio company and I think the portfolio needs growth is going to be impacted due to pandemic, for example, I'll get out of it. I will reduce it. I will trim it. And I will position for something where I think it will be less impacted or probably will be positively benefited because of pandemic. So for example, we bought Metropolis. Hypothetically, for example, the diagnostic chain. And they benefited immensely. By October 2021, the phase two of COVID was over. And we said the stocks are discounting five years as if the COVID will continue for five years. We exit a diagnostic as well. Because earnings growth is going to be now different. We cannot say that this company will grow earnings uh, by 15% over 10 years. Those are full paradise. Because you are assuming 10 years, everything to remain same, but nothing remains same. Everything changes every year. There is not a single company probably uh, in India, uh, maybe except one company out of 5,000 listed companies, which delivered 20% every year growth. There are many companies in India which delivered 20% compounded growth. But there is not a single company in India probably which is delivered 20% growth every year. There is a difference now. Are you getting about compounding? And every year there is a difference. Compounding growth means if 100 becomes, for example, 200, 200 divided by 100 raised to 1 upon 10 minus 1, you get CAGR. Say, for example, 20%. But what I want, I want 100 to 120, 120 to 145, 145 to 175, 175 to 200, 200 to every year for 10 years. Because money is made like that. Money is not made linear, CAGR. So we have to keep focusing on the underlying growth assumptions. And if there is any change in underlying growth assumptions, then we need to review that position in the portfolio. Got it. So just one follow-up question on that. So when you said underlying growth assumptions or underlying earnings growth assumption, what if, you know, in terms of uh, talking in terms of relativity, so what if the price growth is not happening at the same pace as that of uh, earnings and it could be on the positive front or it could be on the negative front. Do you take into account the price or do you only focus on the earnings part? First is the earnings part and second is the price part. Got it. Very Got it. important is the change in underlying growth assumption is for how long? If it is for one quarter, it doesn't make any difference. No problem. It's okay. It happens. If it is for two quarters, okay. If it is for one year, question mark. After one year, where is the guarantee it will not happen? What will change after one year? And how you are predicting right now after one year? More uncertainty. The underlying growth assumption what is the cause of that? What has changed to it? For example, I was holding Maruti and underlying growth has some change. But what was the reason? The reason was supply side issue. But underlying demand, there was a waiting period. If the underlying demand has not changed, but underlying supply has changed, it is a postponement of earnings. We always need to ask, is a deletion of the demand or is a postponement of demand? If it is a deletion of demand, get out of it. If it is a postponement of demand, be part of the year to absorb that volatility, you have to take that pain for one, two quarters, but ultimately it will give you much higher returns. And that's what exactly happened, for example, say for example, Maruti. Yeah. So what you need to be very clear is that what is underlying growth assumption? Is there any change? What is the causing the change? How much is priced in? And how long are it is going to last? If somebody tells me next quarter, I'll put that company under red box. And next quarter, they say again, next quarter, definitely it becomes dark red. And then it becomes again, next quarter, something is seriously wrong. 
really something is seriously wrong for that company. Something has happened. Correct. And then he says, sir, one more quarter. Oh, that's painful time. Really painful time. And we have seen many companies. Um, those are the initial signs which you have to read the lips. You know, uh, you have to really read what they are trying to convey. Uh, and you need to see the uh, across the when, the when those interlinkages then start, you know. So, if, for example, auto company is telling you semiconductor chips are not available and TSMC from, uh, you know, Taiwan is also telling you that we are running shortage uh, and also the Tesla is telling you we are running shortage. All three are saying the same thing. Right? But if only your company says that, others are not showing so, then it becomes kind of a question mark. You need to probe. You need to probe what is happening actually with your investment company. Got it, sir. Sir, I'm not really sure how much time time do we have to continue with the Q and A. I wanted to check with you before we move further on the question. No problem. Go ahead, um, sir. Uh, so, in one of your articles, you talked about Euro plus one thing, right? So, you know, as per your opinion, which particular sectors or businesses would be really benefiting because of these shifts, as far as India is concerned? Because you know, similar. Uh, you know, uh, discussions have happened on the China plus one front as well, because, but at the same time, we have leaders who talk about, you know, not, it, it's probably a temporary uh, advantage, which Indian companies are getting, but India may not entirely be able to replace China in that uh, dynamics of the game. Where do you think, you know, uh, the Euro plus one, so it's a twofold question. The first part is, where do you think the Euro plus one theme in which particular sectors or industries might benefit India? And the second one is on the China plus one theme, like any particular value chains, do you uh, anticipate benefiting as far as India is concerned or uh, any particular sectors or industries? So in Europe plus one, you know, you know, uh, in, in fact, we have written a very detailed insights on it, and it is uh, we also mentioned which are the sectors which will benefit out of it. Uh, clearly, uh, wherever the energy cost, uh, uh, you know, is a significant proportion of your total cost, and that energy cost has become, uh, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 percent higher, uh, those sectors are the first sectors which get impacted the most. Uh, so capital goods is one thing, a specialty chemical is another thing. These two are the prime sectors where, uh, right. you know, and auto ancillaries, part of auto ancillaries, right. uh, these are the primary three sectors uh, which can uh, which can probably benefit the most because those plants becomes unviable uh, at that particular cost. Uh, and also uh, on the long-term basis, the companies have started already thinking, the few companies have already announced the huge capex. Uh, as I speak with you, uh, yesterday there's one multinational company announced 150 crores capex for the first time probably last 10 years. Uh, to put up a plant in India. Um, we have another company, uh, you know, again, a German company already announced 1,000 crores capex uh, uh, to shift their manufacturing line from uh, Germany to India. We have a third company, which have announced two weeks back, 700 crores ad additional capex to cater to the global requirement and many more such examples. So there are endless examples. But uh, important is, uh, you know, what happens is that you need to uh, really uh, uh, think through it. Whenever... Nobody has a love for India. Please understand. Nobody loves, uh, you know, any 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 company uh, or any country. These all are business decisions. So your cost competitiveness is very important. Now, why India becomes cost competitive? Ten years back, that was not the case. Why? Because the Indian volume, the domestic market volumes, they were very low. Correct. Those domestic market volumes have become now big. So. Typically, how the global companies work is that they first put plant in India to cater to the Indian requirements. Okay, If the Indian requirements are not big, then they import from the parent company, wherever global location, and try to cater to Indian market. Because say, for example, Indian requirement is only 10 units. Correct? But the plant is viable only if it is 100 units. So you do import. Over a period of 10 years, that 10 has become 100. India demand from 10 has become 100. So then you put up a plant in India because now it becomes viable. Moment you make it viable, the first objective is to cater to the Indian requirement. And such outsourcing opportunity becomes toppings because now your plant is viable. You can globally, you can fight as a cost competitive plant. And therefore now it becomes easy to put another 50 units, for example, so that it becomes supplier for the global parent locations. So, for example, the largest digital set company, company in India, a global company, has only three plants. 
India, China, and North America. India imports wherever India is less competitive. China imports where China is less competitive. And North America imports wherever North America is incompetitive. Everybody imports and everybody exports because ultimately your cost competitiveness is most critical, correct? And that's why we see a lot of such opportunities as Indian volumes have gone up. So the viability of the plant on a standalone basis is already viable. So you're already making good return on capital employed and therefore it becomes easy for you to extend to uh, the next one. Got it, sir. Got it. Fair enough, sir. Um, so moving to the next question, um, in one of your articles where you were talking about winning the game of change, uh, you talked about sector or business rotation. Um, now, in, in terms of uh, how do you basically decide whether you want to sell a particular business, like, you know, there could be four things which could be going on. One is overvaluation. The second one is probably contraction of margins or growth. The third one is maybe short-term headwinds or the fourth one is any particular allocation limit which you have that I don't want to invest more than particular percentage of portfolio in any company, any sort of like a thumb rule which you may carry. So combination of all four. So of course, uh, you know, we have the investment framework, we have the sectoral limits, you cannot cross a particular limit. So that that comes, of course, the first thing. Right. But more importantly, the other things like we already discussed, like pharma, I give an example, you know, I give an example of auto company, that if there is a change in growth assumption, what we work around it. I also gave an example about the valuation, like for example, pharma, we exited because in four months we got four years returns. And therefore the valuation actually became extremely expensive. Uh, and we knew that that growth of FI20 is not possible to get replicated in FI23 and 24. It is just one and a half year of COVID problems, correct? And therefore we exited, correct? So it is a combination of that. And I think a uh, few we already uh, discussed in your first question. Right, sir. Right, sir. Got it. Sir, moving to the next question, in terms of judging the strength of an industry, especially the entry barriers and competitiveness, like uh, how do you go about quantifying or any particular parameters you use to judge these two aspects when it comes to a business analysis front? Which two aspects? Entry barriers and competitiveness, industry competitiveness. Every industry is competitive. There is not a single industry in the world where you will not see competition. You have to make your own way. So, Zero uh, standard, for example, broking industry is highly competitive. Highly competitive. But then zero that entered. And today became the largest. So, these are all things that don't happen. If a player comes with a unique business model, if a player comes with a unique positioning and unique cost competitiveness, then any player can break. The, as I say, today's blue can become tomorrow red. So many examples. Monopolies, is not a birthright. It's not a, you should never assume it will remain. Company has to work towards it to the remain oligopolies. But they can't take it for granted. You know, 10 years back, there was only Lux. But today you have so many B2C brands directly available at your home. And you do actually purchase through Amazon. Who knew 10 years back that Amazon will become a new distribution platform? But today Amazon is a new distribution platform. Flipkart is a new distribution platform. Competition changes every day. What is important is that how resilient is your portfolio company? They should never assume. They should never assume. They should never take the market share as granted. Moment you are in a complacent, you will lose your market share. There is not a single industry where you will not see entry of new players. Everybody wants. Everybody is hungry. How resilient is your business model? That determines the entry barriers. If you are resilient enough, then competition will not probably think to enter into your arena because they know that you are so resilient. It is so difficult for, for a new player to fight because you built a business model, which is a rock solid business model. Correct? But you should never take it things for granted. PSU banks thought for granted that we have the largest physical network. But today, you cannot take it for granted. Even a prior state bank cannot take it for granted that I'm the best digital bank. So what? Correct? So, as I said, every, you know, only constant is change. And you cannot take it for granted for any industry. Every industry is competitive. 
every industry you will see the new players. The only issue is your portfolio of companies, what kind of a resilience they are built to defend, not only defend, but to increase their market share. Forget defending. They need to increase their market share despite how competition tough it might be. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. Thanks so much for that answer. Sir, uh, uh, you know, a follow-up question on the pricing power discussion which we had earlier. How do you measure pricing power of a business? Uh, maintain gross profit margin is one technique. Another one is gross profit dollars per unit ton sold or something like that. Like any other metric which you use to judge whether a pricing power is being maintained by that particular business? I think importantly is to look at the ROCE rather than just gross margin. It should be a combination of two factors of the return on capital employed, whether that is remained same or not. Because if that remains same, it means the company has demonstrated pricing power with the same capital efficiency. You know, so at times gross margins may not give you the 100% correct picture. What I'm saying, you need to use the combination of that too. And not only combination of these two, combination of many tools, you know, and probably once you put ROC, it takes care of the entire balance sheet aspect of it. You know, so for example, if a paint company enters into, uh, you know, putting up a cement plant, uh, you know, to improve their cost competitiveness, uh, maybe yes, maybe not, right, wrong, separate issue. But, you know, so you need to, once you put ROC underlying into it, you will come to know that every business goes through the cycles. And when the business goes through the cycle, the challenges are different. You know, uh, if you are a, for example, specialty chemical company, and if you are manufacturing, say, for example, 500 tons of, uh, uh, you know, a specialty chemical, you, it's not possible for you to do backward integration. But moment now we are 5,000 tons. The raw material availability in India itself is only 1,000 tons. So when you're at 500 tons, it is easy. But when you're 5,000 tons, you cannot procure raw material for you. You have to do backward integration one step back, correct? And when you are 50,000 tons, you need to do five steps back because then only you create your moat. So otherwise, it is so easy for anybody else to replicate you. So if you are saying specialty chemical, there is an N-1, N-2, N-3, N-, there are four steps, five, more number of steps, more complex the chemistry and more complex the chemistry, more are the entry barriers and more are the entry barriers, higher is the probability that you will keep gaining market share. For example, there is a company called Vinity Organics, 65% market share in the world. ATBS and IBP. In the world. Why? Why others cannot do it? Because the complexity what they have done at that cost is not easy to replicate the entry barrier. Anybody can do it, but you need to do it in the right way to crack that code. These guys are doing complex chemistry at the right capital efficiency with 35% EBITDA margins and 30% plus return on capital employed. And that's a rare combination. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. Thanks so much for that answer. Um, sir, uh, I, you know, uh, one of our alumni had a question around uh, Governance. So he came up with a company name, obviously, for the, uh, to, we have shadowed out the company name. So it's basically a MNC company engaged into capital goods. They have, uh, so the parent company is promoter owned and they have a listed Indian company as a subsidiary, which is partly owned by promoters. Now, in such cases, you know, there is obviously a, a doubt on the fact that whether the orders would flow into the parent company or to the subsidiary company. What happens in such scenarios? How do you go about judging whether there could be an exposure to potential corporate governance issues to such firms and whether how to decide whether to invest in such scenarios or not in such companies? Corporate governance is one of the most important, uh, what I would say, criteria while making any investment whether you are making it for short term or long term. There are two types of corporate governance. One is which you can teach through balance sheet analysis and which can figure it out easily by any good research analysis. You can figure it out, is it the right governance or not governance? Mm -hmm. And secondly is basically the governance which is not part of the balance sheet. And nobody can teach you that. And that's more critical. For example, Volkswagen Global, the Porsche car family, I want not to miss a norm scam and stock is down 60%. How do you predict? Now, for example, where India's largest pharmaceutical company, US FD import alert, stock is down 55%. 
For example, the global largest oil and gas company and one oil spill and stock is down 45%. What do you do? So there are two parts of governance, of course, uh, from the, your uh, you know, student's perspective. First, of course, try to understand the governance from the at least what is uh, identifiable through balance sheet. And of course, uh, getting into the intentions of the management, uh, like 100% subsidiary, product introduction, royalty, and many more things. The good part is that as far as those soft issues goes, the minority shareholders are very active nowadays from the last few years in India, and uh, that's true even globally. And therefore, the chances of uh, accidents, uh, you know, at least uh, for such companies where multinational, they are more clear. They give guidance for three years, four years, five years that if you are saying my royalty is 5%, we think 5% will remain same. We have a seven year agreement. At the end of seventh year, we will revisit, uh, you know, what should be the royalty. So you get a clear clarity that what is to be done, what is not to be done. Um, at times, there are companies where you don't have clarity, particularly the new technology uh, from where it will come. Will it come into the listed company? Will it come into the unlisted companies? And those are the areas where are uh, what I, I would say is a little bit uh, gray areas. Uh, the, the problem is shareholders want it to be in the listed company. At the same time, shareholder doesn't want to pay for capex of their technology. Um, that becomes a uh, you know no no. I mean, uh, if you want a technology in a listed company, then you do R and D. So thousand crore ka R and D, will you do it? Then shareholders say no no no, we don't. Then you just want fruits of technology. It was you know, give me a break. So at times it becomes like extreme, you know, everybody will, of course want the best of thing, but that's not possible. It's not doable. So it means then multinational will do it in unlisted company. They're in bound to be, they can't do anything. They have to do it because they have a huge capex. There is a lot of trials. There are initial losses, 200, 300 billions of dollars get funded into it. That listed company doesn't have that kind of a balance sheet to absorb such shocks, uh, to absorb those failures. Therefore, they are not listed. And then they become successful and then people want it to be listed. And then you raise a question mark on it. I mean, uh, 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 which is not, of course, the right way to look at it. So uh, I think there are global companies. Most of them are very clear. Most of them, that what they want to do in an unlisted company, what they want to do in a listed company, uh, you know, quarterly conference calls, most of the time they happen. And nowadays, there are only few companies where such clarity is not there. You know, and the best part is that, uh, you know, you have such companies. You know, there are another 500 companies in which you can invest. So, okay, if they are not clear or they don't want to be transparent right. enough, the best thing is to not to enter into an, any area which is an uncertain area, you know, because as an investor, you are not, be, you need to be clear what you are paying for, uh, what business you are planning to own. And if you are not clear about it, skip it. There are other opportunities, you know, look for those. Got it. Got it, sir. Thanks so much for that. It, it definitely provides a lot of clarity. Um, so the next question, which obviously we also wanted to understand, like, how do you go about generating an investment idea at Alpha Accurate? Ek din kam but, uh, <laughs> uh, what we do is that uh, to put it very, uh, you know, uh, in a brief, uh, we have a 3M approach, market size, market share, margin of safety, uh, market size is size of opportunity by the companies where industries are really large. That's the first M. Second M is uh, market share. We generally buy only top five companies in the industry. Uh, we believe that buying leaders can help you not only create wealth, but also protect capital. And of course, third is margin of safety. Uh, in India, there are 5,000 listed entities. Out of 5,000 companies, there are only 500 companies, which makes, or probably now 650 companies, which makes 100 crores plus profit. That's it. Only 650 companies makes 100 crores is less than $20 million, you know, that's it, or only $20 million plus profit. So we believe that is a, a good number to start with because it means you have arrived uh, only, you, you are only, uh, you are 10% of the universe, you know? And uh, on that moment, you put other con, whether it is a leverage. So all of our portfolio companies, most of them are date free uh, or you put the OCF cash flow conversion. Most of our portfolio companies will be 60, 70, 80% OCF conversion uh, to cash flow. Um, and on top of it, you put the earnings growth of 18 to 20%. Uh, that basically narrows down your uh, funnel, you know. So from 5,000 companies and uh, large profit size, uh, you know, uh, large market share, uh, date free balance sheet, uh, good OCF to EBITDA. 50, 60% minimum. Uh, and on top of it, you would have, uh, you know, the earnings growth 
and that that entire up you know funnel is backed by uh, there is one more layer outside which is a uh, management governance and uh, a balance sheet you know the financials so that is the triangle which keeps uh, that's a fencing you know uh, and as that basically that leads to further uh, you know what i would say the investment universe further gets reduced correct down down yeah. basically that basically get, gets you about uh, 250 uh, kind of a companies 300 kind of a companies and from the 250 300 companies we try to invest into you know that 50 60 uh, kind of a companies across our different portfolios uh, that's how the uh, so on an average we meet one company a day uh, our ideas comes most from the by meeting the industry players uh, by understanding the competition by understanding the competitor by understanding the supplier by understanding the customer and that's where basically you get the ideas from. Uh, those are the things uh, from where, uh, and we always look for the market leadership. So we have identified 40 sectors in India where there are only five players in the industry uh, and every of that company is oligopoly monopoly. And uh, by monopoly by default, it means better pricing power, better profitability, a low debt equity, high OCF, uh, high ROC and high free cash flow conversion for the growth and high CapEx uh, for the reinvestment of the business. Uh, and of course, being monopoly also, it means 99% uh, of the time, best of the management. You cannot become number one with poor management. You cannot become number one with poor governance. You cannot become number one with poor financials. So it means all those three things are already there. That's why you are top three in India. And we have a 40 such sectors. So, uh, and those are really oligopolies. For example, you know, airbags, there are only three players. Uh, for example, shock absorbers, uh, there are only three players. For example, bearings, there are only three players. For example, credit rating, there are only three players. For example, plywood, there are only two players. For example, uh, wiring harness, there is only one company, 95% market share. Uh, for example, uh, data center, digisets, there is only one company. For example, pump manufacturing, there are only five companies. And uh, the, for example, biscuits, there are only three companies. For example, air conditioning, there are only six companies. For example, washing machine, there are only five companies. Five companies are 85% market share in the washing machine, correct? So, uh, and so on and so forth. Moment you try to identify the oligopolies even if you go wrong on russia ukraine war even if you go wrong on pandemic even if you go wrong on island fs credit crisis even if you go wrong on national it doesn't make any difference if this company uh, uh, only if this company grow india can grow you know this company are the biggest beneficiary of the consolidation these companies are the biggest beneficiary of formalization these companies are the biggest beneficiary of europe plus one these companies are the biggest beneficiary of china plus one these companies are the biggest beneficiary of any global uncertainty because what will happen let's assume there is a recession let's assume everything is down 10 percent in terms of the revenue growth this company will revenue growth will be down seven percent and not ten percent so they will go down less correct so in any situation, whichever you can think of, these companies are best positioned to navigate the volatility, very important, to make sure they go down less in a down market in terms of the earnings and make sure that they grow fast in a rising environment of economy. So that basically helps you to not only uh, create wealth, but it actually helps you to make sure you protect your capital. And that's what our, uh, you know, our tagline is, our innovation philosophy is, all about protect capital, create wealth. And that's something very important. We are not just wealth creation. First important ingredient of it is that rule number one, never lose money, protect capital as much as possible. And if you can protect, because 100 to 50 is a 50% decline, but 50 to 100 is a 100% increase. And that is rare. That never happens. And then ultimately, uh, you know, uh, uh, the damage would be done at the portfolio. So very important for us is the risk management side of the portfolio. Uh, thanks so much, sir, for that answer. I, uh, sir, I, I know we are already 22 minutes over due as compared to the time slot which we had. I just wanted no to just check, like, how much time do we have? So accordingly, I will ration out the questions and get in. Don't worry, no problem. Please, sir. So the next question which I had was a follow-up on the investment ideology. So you mentioned cash conversion. There are obviously certain industries or sectors, or let's take example of EPC involved contract companies, which basically have poor cash conversion because that's the nature of the industry. They, they're involved with government contracts and whatnot. So in that scenario, you would be completely eliminating those uh, Avoid those companies. There are other opportunities which are available. Those are decent opportunities. So avoid the companies where you think there can be uh, cash flow problems because ultimately they will not make uh, you know compounding wealth. 
got it sir and and in terms of let's say cycles every particular industry goes through one and there are certain scenarios where the cash conversion could be bad because of owing to the cycles so in that scenario but those also happen to be lucrative points to get into uh, those particular firms then do you completely eliminate those points as well in terms of playing the cycles i don't think cycle is a much role to play with cash flow mm -hmm. cycle is a role to play with the earnings growth mm -hmm. for example if unilever india hindustan unilever suppose one year is bad in earnings growth possible but that will not impact the cash flow conversion it will not happen that from 75% cash flow conversion it becomes only 10% cash flow conversion right. 75 can become 65 possible but it will not become you know minus correct because then right. the, the nature of business has changed right right generally you will not find it you will find cycles impacting the earnings growth prospects hmm. you will not find cycles impacting cash flow problem except say recent times of covid where everybody wanted six months inventory at home because supply chains were fractured which is a one off you know so those are the rare, those are the rare thing. and even in those times who makes who is who which companies can have the six months inventory only those who are debt free because they have a cash to have the six months inventory correct so and who can do that companies which are leaders companies which are oligopolies for example i know companies that have a nine months inventory because they know i will not get container from china on in that year cash flow it is not important what is important is that i need to have a production plant running otherwise the production plant will shut down correct but it is a one off is a one of like global pandemic or global war kind of a situation is a exceptional situation on a recurring basis normally when you put your 10 years cycle uh, 20 year cycle where you see up and downs of every company you will not observe uh, such things in a normal cycle environment got it sir makes sense sir makes sense uh, so moving to the next question uh, in one of your article you mentioned that you believe capex cycle is playing out very strongly in india now our question is how do you go about judging whether the capex cycle has uh, basically reached a peak obviously you know that is something which is visible only in hindsight but how do you go about you know judging whether it has reached an oversupply or a over capacity in that particular domain i think very easy to do that one is you know you do gfcf gross capital formation you track that you track the total capex spend you track the corporate profit to gdp you track the total borrowings by corporate you track the banks uh, you know lending to the corporates so there are n number of factors you track the total capex announced you track the total projects announced you compare it for 10 years which cmi gives that data uh, and many such indicators so those indicators are uh, there you know for example credit growth, corporate credit growth in india for example has been muted for 10 years so agar capex hota tha to corporate credit growth would have become 20% no? but it has not happened so gross capital formation is still very low our corporate profit to gdp was uh, you know uh, you know you know 9% in 2006 which dropped to 2% in 2019 or 20 correct uh, you look at the uh, you know bank's balance sheet nobody wanted to lend to corporates uh, look at the corporate borrower uh, their balance sheets were basically high over leverage last 10 years correct so you right. know you know the, the capex is now at the, <laughs> because now the balance sheet has become under leverage credit growth is corporate credit growth is very low your total capex or last 10 years is very low within that you get break up between public capex and private capex public capex capex, capex figure you can get it from the budget a central budget and state budget you combine it you get the total budget so you come to know who is funding what and on top of it you have a rbi annual report which gives you all the relevant information got it sir got it sir thanks so much for that answer sir now, uh, moving to the next one, in one of your articles, Five Reason to be Bullish on Indian Equities, you talked about, you know, the importance of tracking macros, like which particular major economic indicators do you use in terms of tracking macros, as well as do you use certain micro aspects at a, uh, you know, like maybe advanced or decliner ratios or volumes or DMA data? So as far as the microeconomic indicator goes, every data point is its own relevance and we need to track all data points. Uh, correct because at different points of time different indicators are relevant uh, so right now for example the inflation is relevant 
uh, IIP is relevant, correct? Uh, some time back can be the further details of inflation. What is driving inflation is important. What is driving electricity is important. What is driving the consumption growth or export growth, the C plus I plus G, what is driving what is every, see in equity research, uh, you know, what is important is that everything is important, correct? You never know what is, uh, you know, what can trigger to what. Uh, so everything is important. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we don't focus excessively on, uh, on macros. Uh, ultimately, we need to do micros. As I said, uh, ultimately, you can't predict everything, uh, you know, over the next three years, five years. It is a, uh, you know, uh, uh, if anybody says I can predict, I mean, it's wrong, correct? So what you need to make sure that the companies what we they, you have bought, they are reasonable enough to navigate the downturn or upturn. And anything can happen at any point of time. So that's basically answer to your first question. Answer to the second question, we don't track anything such on technicals, you know, except by the basic few things, but... Otherwise, uh, we don't pay uh, you know much attention to the technical side of it. Got it, got it, sir. Um, coming to the next question, sir. Uh, a lot of young, high-growth companies are getting listed these days, which don't really have much of a history of profitability. Neither uh, much of a history, honestly speaking. Uh, in such scenarios, how do you go about filtering these businesses, or do you completely ignore such firms which don't have a history, or uh, or profitability at the moment? So first and foremost, you know, the company needs to be the market leader. Our 3M approach, market yeah. size, market share, and margin of safety. So company should be leader. Because once company is leader, it means they have done something in their life. Maybe in two years, maybe in three years, maybe in 10 years, whatever the history of that company would be, but they would have done something right. Then only you become a, a leader. Number, one. Mm -hmm. Number two, what is the promoter's stake? You know, in many IPOs we have seen in last particular two years where promoter stake is only 5%. So they are not taking the shots. The private equity guys are calling the shots. What is to be done now? Yeah. To avoid such companies. Uh, number three, the profitability. Uh, most companies are burning money. But then you have to look at uh, through the PNL that what is leading to burning money? Is it just a customer acquisition cost or it is a technology cost which they are writing off in their PNL? What is burning the money? And by when you think it will become profit? Because once you are already top three player, correct? Important for you to understand is that what is that flying wheel which will turn to a profitable and when that happens, what will be the profit? What yeah. the cost will come down or where the revenue growth will further accelerate and when that happens, what will be the profit? You know, and do you think that can happen in over three years or not? I mean, we are not a private degree, so we don't take 12 years view. And I don't know, people write, you know, 20 years DCF is, uh, you know, very difficult for me to understand that. But so what we do is that, what is your next three years to what kind of profitability company can achieve? So this is, this is the few panel market leadership, uh, you know, uh, balance sheet, debt free kind of thing, uh, you know, promoter skin in the game. Earnings grow. And by when did it become profitable and how much it will become profitable? So you mentioned uh, promoter skin in the game. On that, I had a quick follow-up question. Now, a lot of promoters do pledge their shares to in eventually increase their holding into the same companies, right? And it, it it could turn out really good for the firms and it could turn out really bad because at times that funding goes into, you know, uh, any other sister company, which is truly a bad business. In such scenarios, even though, let's say, uh, if the promoter is uh, pledging his existing stake to increase his existing stake into the firm. Do you still consider it to be a good thing or uh, how do you go about analyzing such scenarios? Generally, we, you know, generally we don't like that kind of a thing. If you are pledging to buy the stake, I mean, we generally don't like that thing. Uh, if you are pledging for capex of the company because it's a banker's requirement, do you pledge your stake? Then it's fine. That's part of the normal life, you know. So if your banker is, for example, largest banker of the country, and if you are putting thousand crores capex for a gross block, they will take all the security, including land, building, plant, machinery, and also you have to pledge your shares as well. So if it is a pledge for that, that is a normal pledge happening for every company from last forty years in India. But if it's a pledge we are doing to raise the stake, to be opportunistic kind of a thing, we'll be a little bit uh, careful on such things. Got it, sir. Thanks so much for that, sir. Uh, so moving to the next question, I think this one is already covered. Um, we will directly move to the diversification questions. Uh, last one, yes. Uh, so how do you go about using real on-ground scuttlebutt uh, data with dealers and distributors to gauge business uh, changes? And how do you further develop this network of dealers and distributors in these industries? Well, I think, you know, every point is important, but in focus is 
not to get carried away by the short term trends because what happens that that is in hindsight you know generally you know when you get on road that uh, you know at times it is already priced in you know at times everybody knows that's why the stock price is down 30% the right. important is from here what we so so we cannot ignore any point but at the same time we need to be smart enough to understand that uh, what kind of weightage we need to give to uh, what things so for example if it is a largest consumer durable company and on ground if we get the feedback that everybody is unhappy because the systems are not working you are not getting inventory on time the sales people are not following up then it is a problem because it is a problem at hr level it is not a ground level problem it is a hr problem correct some problem at the company level which will take time to sort out but for example if you tell me that if i go to the showroom and they say that you know ye abhi mal hamara you know we can buy a little bit demand slow down hai then it's okay you know next month then they will say are abhi to pura hamara mal bik gaya now we are very happy i mean uh, so <laughs> what you will do with that correct so uh, you know you need to you need to be wise enough to understand what you need to give importance when you know so everything is important but uh, you know you are prioritizing from the a timing perspective the time management perspective you need to be more focused on the long term growth drivers and, and you should not get carried away too much beyond a point on the uh, you know the short term surveys because those surveys are really very limited they are not exhaustive aapko malum padega ki bombay mein something is not doing well but in ludhiana is doing well uh, i mean ludhiana is not doing well and some bangalore is doing well i mean there is no way you can actually get the total company level thing and total company level thing is already disclosed in quarterly results so i mean uh, you know so what is important is that you do always figure it out what are the underlying structural things what company is doing right or wrong so if company is in the midst of implementing a sap system yes there will be two quarters of transition to move from the current software to the sap software transition for everybody painful time for everybody this is part of life it is a structural change company is aiming for the better productivity and that's important correct uh, but if you hear that uh, three guys have resigned the cfo has resigned the uh, key man has resigned that guy uh, the head marketing head sales somebody is poaching and five people are exiting it tells you something that there's something which is probably uh, is, is 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 not on the right track you know something is happening so you know you need to be as i said you need to be wise enough to uh, uh, to understand that how much marks you need to give to what got it sir thanks so much for that answer sir uh, the last three questions are from faculty front um, i think you have already answered the first one uh, impactful reading recommendations to develop a business sense i guess that's a mdna lesson for each and every candidate present in this class um, in terms of any particular authored books which you feel are very very important which these young minds should read Uh, unheard of and yet very impactful uh, you know i think that uh, the psychology of money is one book very good book um, there is one interesting book uh, you know if uh, uh, you know if you really want to become a uh, entrepreneur the ultimate sales machine by uh, shell at homes uh, super book uh, super super book uh, uh, then there is a the 10x rule Uh, there is one book called the Ten X Rule. Uh, again, is a very, very, very impactful book. Uh, uh, easy to implement uh, and uh, you know easy to uh, easy to make you sure that are you on the track or not. Uh, so those are the few few books. You know, more importantly, if you read seven hundred annual reports, you know seven hundred business models. Keep reading it again. and again and again i think those are the biggest books you know right you will learn a lot from that right sir um so just the last two question um which mistakes did you make in your career initial years which you would want these young generations to avoid well i think mistakes happens uh, you know is a part of life uh, our job is to make sure as a uh, learned human being is not to repeat the mistake repeating the same mistake is a problem making a mistake making a new mistake is okay that's part of life you know because uh, you know without mistake jo kaam karega usse hi galti ho sakti hai jo kaam hi nahi karega usse galti kya hogi but we need to make sure that you don't repeat that mistake same mistakes are not allowed to be repeated 
Naya mistake, no problem. <laughs> you know, so uh, we always believed in, uh, 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 the, you know, that kind of so mistakes are part of life. Uh, that's okay. You have to learn from the mistakes. Every day, mistake hota hai. Kuch na kuch hota hai hai. You know, uh, we are not, humans are not God. So uh, that's okay. But you have to learn from the mistake. You need to build the processes uh, uh, to make sure that you don't make those mistakes. So, for example, uh, you know, last week only, uh, I was doing one, uh, uh, one analysis that, uh, you know, companies missed during the year. You know, every year we do that. And why we have missed? You know, what is the thing? Why it did, didn't occur to us to buy those stocks? Uh, was it a governance problem? Okay, so we filtered out all those companies which we would have not uh, touched. Okay, fine. Then still there are 75 companies which we didn't participate. Why? Why we have not participated? And what we can do to make sure that next time, what are the trades which we don't miss to make sure that next time we don't miss such opportunities? So at times, Many of those companies we debated internally, but we were not having strong views. Uh, we were waiting for some signals. We are waiting for better improvement in visibility uh, and many of such things, you know. So we said, okay, so what is the learning for the next year, you know? And there's always then brainstorming that, okay, these are the ways to improve. So always, you know, re, uh, always evaluate your own work. It's a very important way of learning that what you have missed. No, I'm not you miss kia. And what, how we make sure that next time we will, in a similar circumstance, we will not miss that, you know. And, uh, you know, and it always is a different, uh, you know, life is learning. So uh, we all are students, correct? And, uh, you know, that's how it works. That's the only way uh, which makes you, uh, you know, on your toes that, okay, from here on, I further need to improve. So every day, you know, I, I always tell to my team, every day we need to improve only 1%. Every day, just 1%. That's it. It is a 400% absolute rate and 365% compounding. So, so both ho jayega, you know. Thanks so much, sir, for the wonderful piece of advice. It was truly an amazing session with a lot of information. We uh, we will share, uh, you know, the, the minutes of the meeting as well as the key takeaways on our Twitter handle. Um, uh, once again, we would, uh, you know, no words can suffice to thank you enough for taking out time on a Saturday and going overboard with the time with Alendra. I'm really sorry for taking no. too, too much time on that front. Uh, it was genuinely a very, very interactive as well as very learning session for all of us. And most importantly, to these young candidates who are just in their first trimester of our program and about to begin their journey of learning financial statement analysis, I think there couldn't have been a better time for uh, this session. So once again, sir, thanks so much for your time. And we hope you give us a similar opportunity in future to learn from you once again. No, no I think it is a you know, really great uh, experience. I think uh, it is really interactive uh, as much as what we can do through Zoom using technology. But, uh, you know, the, and that's what basically, you know, the interaction is what makes the uh, probably sessions more uh, lively. Uh, so, the, you know, so thanks, uh, Sailesh, uh, for, you know, uh, giving us an opportunity. And I wish all the best to all these young entrepreneurs, uh, all future billionaires, uh, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, you have developed the niche, the knack of uh, uh, identifying the stock sectors uh, and uh, keep that uh, passion on, you know, uh, that's the only passion. Uh, and of course, last but not least, uh, you know, uh, integrity, something very critical. Uh, so passion and integrity combo. Uh, if you're the best of both this world, uh, believe me, uh, you know, you'll be the TEDx speaker uh, soon. And uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, you know, every one of us will be following you, uh, correct? And, uh, and of course, we'll be very happy to uh, see uh, you guys becoming billionaires and entrepreneurs and successful uh, in, in, in your journey. Uh, so today, only one resolution from my side, uh, one annual report a day and uh, 10x efforts. And if you do 10x efforts, 70 lakhs rupees minimum to start with. Nobody can stop it. Yeah, I can say smiles. Once I say 70 lakhs rupees, everybody's smiling. Wow, gadi a gaya, bakan a gaya, sab kuch a gaya. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm sure it's doable job. Nothing is impossible. It is absolutely doable. I uh, Believe me, it is doable. It's absolutely very, very easy to make to your targets. Very easy. Really easy. It's a seamless. It's not difficult. Believe me, it is it, not difficult. It's what you all are capable of doing, correct? is all doable task. So it's, it's not something extraordinarily difficult kind of thing, correct? Um, and uh, keep your learning desire on, uh, learn as much as you can. Uh, knowledge is the only asset, uh, you know, which can grow every day, correct? So with that, uh, thanks, thanks everyone. And wish you all the best for your future success.
Thank you so much, sir. Bye-bye.